Last year, my wife Ashley and I celebrated our 10 year anniversary of being married. Yes, thank you, thank you. And uh, we went out in style, man. We celebrated by going to New York City, which is arguably like the greatest city in the world, man. And it, it was a beautiful time. And when we got there, we really just had like a few things on the agenda. First was to walk everywhere and then to eat everything we saw. And that's exactly what we did. And if you know anything about New York City, man, they are very limited on space. People are stacked on top of people. And you see this every day when it's time to eat. It's a beautiful thing. On any given moment as you're walking down a street, whether it be Broadway, 42nd, 34th, whatever it is, you see the light coming through. You see these buildings, you see the structure, you see the colors, and you start to smell everything that's in there in New York. In New York. And then what you start to see are the restaurants just spill onto the sidewalks. And the sidewalks are filled with people not just walking, but eating. They're stopping to sit down, to get at the table, and to have a meal. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. The food is just so rich in New York. I mean, because there's so many people. So if your food, if you're going to make it as a restaurant, it's got to be good in New York. And I think there's something deeply true about all of us wanting to have a good meal experience. Whether you're in New York or wherever you're at, you think about even if you're going to travel somewhere, you, you imagine, okay, what are we going to eat? Where are we going to eat? What kind of food do they have there? Planning for food is an essential part of planning to go anywhere. Because sharing a meal, eating food is a deeply important part of the human experience. And I would argue it's because of this, that when you and I sit down to have a meal together, what we're ultimately after and what our souls are aching for is what the Bible calls communion. We want in this moment to have communion, which is both a moment of intimacy and acceptance over food, ironically. I'm reminded that the greatest meal I had in New York on that trip was at this restaurant called Catch. And it was amazing. Um, some of our best friends are like family to us. They live in New York. Uh, they, they live up in Harlem. My buddy pastors a church up there. And he said, oh, Fred, we got to go to Catch, man. We got to go to Catch. I'm like, all right, make reservations. So first night we're in town, we go to Catch. And he was like, man, I was here last week on my own anniversary. We saw Ja Rule in here. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> Some of you are like, Ja Rule, who is Ja Rule? Anyways, <laughs> we get to this restaurant, and on the corner of the street, there's this big bouncer already there, got a show ID, yada, 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 reservations, all that. So we get through him, go up these steps, like you can start to just feel this, this moment coming. Hit another security guard, get through him, go to the hostess. You know, Kenny's like, yeah, it's a table for four. We get seated, we go sit down, and this place is just beautiful. I'm like, man. How am I going to pay for this? <laughs> and it's just a great moment, a great moment. And we're, we're sitting there, we get our drinks, and, and this uh, uh, waitress comes by, and she, she goes up to my friend Kenny. She's like, excuse me, are you Kenny Hart? And, you know, he starts smirking. I'm like, boy, you don't know. You know, it's not like that for you out here. <laughs> and uh, he says, yes, I am. I'm like, oh, this dude. And so she walks away. And uh, a moment later, another waiter comes by, and it turns out it's uh, Kenny's, one of his best friends from his college baseball team. And they haven't seen each other in years. And this dude's tall, handsome, like, oh, man, he's about to be a model or something. <laughs> and, and they're just catching up. I'm like, all right, cool, cool. You know, I'm still looking at the menu. And then he, he walks off, and I start looking at everything I want to order, which sounds amazing. And then I see the prices. I'm like, and I, and I started to do calculations. And I'm not just doing like, how much is this bill gonna cost? I start doing life calculations. <laughs> like, are my kids gonna go to college? Am I gonna, you know, I'm gonna blow the entire trip's money, like tonight, all of it's going. It's all gonna be done at this spot. And, and I look up and here comes this guy that Kenny knew, his teammate, with, with plates of food already. Now, food loving Fredo is very excited at this moment. <laughs> Financially worried Alfredo, it's starting to get a little panicky because who's going to pay for that food that just came to us? And he, food just keeps coming. It just keeps coming. I mean, everything that was an appetizer, he brought to our table. He brought almost half the meals, the steak, the fish, the chicken. I mean, everything, the, the pasta, the dessert came, and it was, it was uh, uh, this cake that had lights, and it was melt. It was not. I couldn't believe it. it. said, happy anniversary. I was just losing. I was in tears at this point. <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing. All this food just kept coming. And that night I realized I, I received more than I could possibly imagine that night. And I didn't have to pay for it. 
This is what it means to come to the table by grace. To receive more than you can imagine. And it doesn't cost you anything. What was so great at that table wasn't me. (laughs) It was who I knew. Who I knew got me access to everything. To everything. And this is what it means to come to the communion table is to realize you come with nothing, but someone at the table is ready to give you everything, everything. The bread broken for you, the cup, his blood poured out for you. You see, Jesus is saying, I'm I'm gonna go and, and die on this cross for you because you have chosen in your sin to go to every other table in life the table of career, the table of sexual desire, the, the, the table of individual freedom, the table of politics. You and I have pursued life at every other table but the one that we were designed for. That's sin. And Jesus invites you back to his table today to return to communion and to find in him what you've been looking for.